Good morning, AP Physics 2. This is Mr. Brinka coming from you from the class. Uh, today is going to be our first day diving into some of the AP2 physics curriculum. Uh, we're going to start with physics and start working through fluids will be our first uh, topic area. So that is what we're going to start with. I'm going to go ahead and open up the PowerPoint. This. You guys can see it. Okay. So we are going to start working through fluids. The first part of fluids is what's called uh, statics fluids. That is when fluids are not moving, but stationary. Uh, so a couple of reminders as we start this. Um, make sure that you've turned in, turned on your notifications for Remind. Uh, your teachers will be communicating to you through this. Um, so you just want to have that up and working so that if make sure you're getting all your messages from your teachers. Uh, also be logging into Canvas every day and complete the daily exit ticket so that you receive credit for attendance. Uh, also, office hours are posted in Canvas in the About the Teacher section. We will be having office hours for this class Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11.50 a.m. to about 12.40 p.m. It will be on Teams. Um, Friday will be the first day that we have it. I'd love for you all to show up there. That way we can meet each other in person um, and face-to-face, -face, things like that. All right, today's ob learning objective and guiding question is I can apply the definitions and equations for fluid dynamics by calculating the values of density, specific gravity, buoyancy, and pressure. So that's what we're gonna start working through. And then guiding question is how can I apply definitions and equations for fluid dynamics? So those are the two things we're gonna be working through. Um, vocabulary, I'd like to start with this. Um, you'll be getting some new terms and things like that as we go. So fluid is basically a liquid or a gas anything that will move around freely one of the the only thing that's not considered a fluid would be a solid um, density you've talked about before and i'm sure in chemistry uh, density is an object's mass per unit and volume it basically tells you how tightly compressed the particles in an object are so if you're comparing the density of wood to the density of water uh, density of water would be higher because those particles are packed closer together uh, then specific gravity you probably haven't talked about before specific gravity what it does is it compares the density of one object to the density of water and it's the ratio between those two numbers so You'll see the equation for it here, specific gravity equals density of a substance divided by the density of water. And then I gave you the density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, pressure in fluids, basically what pressure is, it's the amount of force divided by an area. The way to think about pressure is what would have more pressure on it, your foot just stepping on the floor or your foot stepping on a nail. Well, it's the same force because it's just your body, but the nail has got a much smaller area, so it's going to create a much greater pressure on your foot. Um, pressure also can be determined by the density of the fluid multiplied by gravity multiplied by height, basically how far underneath that fluid you are. Uh, atmospheric pressure. This is the pressure due to the air above you. If you think about it, you are standing in the atmosphere and there's a column of air that goes from your head all the way up through the atmosphere that is pushing down on you constantly. And that's what's called atmospheric pressure. Gauge pressure is another another term we'll talk about. It's the pressure above or below atmospheric pressure. So if you go take the pressure in your tire, that will tell you the gauge pressure. And then to calculate atmospheric pressure, what you do is you add gauge pressure plus, plus the atmospheric pressure, and that will give you the total or absolute pressure. So just a couple of ways to think through those things. All right, density. We've already talked about the formula for it, so you guys know that. Um, the little symbol they use in physics is rho, this looks like a P, and then it's mass divided by volume. The key term that you wanna know or key number you wanna make sure you have memorized is density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And then kind of a cool fact, um, an object that is not known what it is, so I could give you a piece of metal and go, hey, tell me what it is. If you could measure its density, you'll be able to determine what it is because every object has a specific, that's made of a specific chemical or a specific compound is constant. So if I gave you a block that I didn't tell you what it was, but it was gold, if you measured its density, you'd be able to figure out that it was gold. 
All right, so here is the first question. I want you to just to read through it, pause the video, and then see if you could come up with an answer to that. So take a minute, pause the video, and then come back. We're gonna do several of these practice questions as we go through it, just to kind of work through some concepts. All right, answer to this one is B. Uh, and then the mass is 3M, so why? Well, the key principle to this is a substance will always have the same density no matter what. Uh, so the density of one kilogram of water would be the same as 100 kilograms of water. What happens is as you increase the mass, the volume increases as the same ratio, so the density remains constant. So we would use density equals mass divided by volume. And what I did, what I'd like to do on this, plug in some made up values. So they didn't tell us what M and B were, so I just picked one and one. It's just an easy way to start. And I said, okay, so my density is now gonna be one. So then we have the value for density, which is going to remain constant. So we're going to use that one. And then they said the, the volume changed to three. So instead of using our original one for volume, I'm going to substitute in three. And then we want to solve for mass, which would come out to three when we do the algebra on it. All right, next question. Just take a minute with it, kind of read through this, pause the video, and then we'll come back and discuss. So on this one, I put through down here kind of how to work through it. So we're again gonna use density equals mass divided by volume and solve for the volume of A and B by using sample values. So I just plugged in two for the density because they said it was doubled, one for the mass, and then the volume was unknown. And then for B, one for the density, one for the mass, and the volume was unknown and solve for it. So for A, I got one half, and for B, I got one. So the volume of B is twice that of the volume of A. So to have them be equal in terms of volume, you would have to multiply A by two. Okay, so here's the idea. Next little concept we're gonna hit is called specific gravity. It's the ratio, this shouldn't say ration, should say ratio of a substance density to the density of water. So density of the substance divided by the density of water. Density of water is always 1,000 kilograms per meter squared. Specific gravity is not going to have any units. If you see specific gravity in a problem, kind of the things to pay attention to. If the specific gravity is less than one, it means the object is less dense than water and it will float on it. If you see the specific gravity is more than one, it's going to be more dense than water and it's going to sink. If you see the specific gravity is equal to one, I didn't put that on here, it means water um, because it's the same density. Okay, so this problem, problem with specific gravity, pause here, take a minute. There's two questions and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so question number one, balsa and oak. It would be those two because the specific gravity is less than one. And then on question number two, I put the work out here to the side. Density of the object divided by the density of water. So I plugged in the density of the object, density of water, and I got 0.45 solving for that one. One additional thing that you can do with specific gravity that's kind of cool. If we know what the specific gravity of the object is, we can determine what percentage of the object would be submerged. So I did two kind of example problems. If the specific gravity was 0.2, it would mean take 0.2 times 100%, it means 20% of the object is underneath the water. And I did another example here on the right. If the specific gravity is 0.6, so take 0.6, multiply by 100, it would mean 60% of the object is submerged underwater. And it just lets you know how much is underneath the water uh, if you know the specific gravity. So a couple little cool things we can do there. Then we're gonna talk about buoyancy and what that is. So buoyancy is an upward force on an object that's immersed in the fluid, whether it's partially or completely submerged, it's always equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced. Uh, so if you've ever, my kids will do this, they'll take a ball and try to push it all the way underneath the water in a pool. You'll notice the more you push underwater, the harder and more difficult it gets to push it because there's an increase in the force buoyancy going upwards. 
All right, so we are going to pick up with force buoyancy. All right, so for force buoyancy, so force buoyancy is an upward force. Uh, as an object becomes more and more submerged, so picture here's the water level and here's my object. Let me use this book as my object. If I were to push it underwater, the force buoyancy would increase, would increase, would increase, would increase, would increase. And then once it's fully submerged, no matter how far down I push it, force buoyancy isn't going to change on it. Okay, so force buoyancy are two equations we can use. Force buoyancy on an object is equal to the density of the fluid times gravity. And then the V is the volume of the fluid displaced. The other way you can figure out force buoyancy is mass of the fluid multiplied by force gravity. And that's what's called Archimedes principle. It says that an object, an object that is floating in a fluid, the force gravity of the object is equal to the buoyancy of the object. So the force, buoyant, force gravity going down on the object is equal to the force, force buoyancy pushing up on the object. All right, so a couple of force buoyancy problems. So take a second, pause the video, look at these three questions, and then we will come back and discuss. Okay, so answers to those questions. Uh, the force buoyancy will increase as the boat sinks. But once it's fully under the water, the force buoyancy remains constant. And the reason for this is if you picture this like my boat, here it is sinking and sinking, more volume is getting displaced, more volume is getting displaced, more volume is getting displaced. Now it's completely underwater, no more volume is getting displaced. Uh, the second question, um, the boat will rise as in the salt water and will displace less water. Here's why that happens. The salt water has a higher density than fresh water. The force buoyancy is going to remain the same because that water is supporting the full weight of that boat. Uh, so the force buoyancy is going to remain constant. And since the density of the fluid increases, the volume that's displaced has to be decreased. And then in question number three, the force buoyancy will be equal to the force gravity. All right, another buoyancy question. Just read through this one, pause the video, write down what you think it is, and then we'll come back and discuss. All right, so for this question, they all have the same buoyant force. And here's the reason why, is I put the equation down. Force buoyancy equals density of the fluid times gravity times volume. And then I just try to work through kind of the steps to think through. The objects are in, all in the same fluid, so I'm using my formula kind of as a checklist. So the density is gonna be the same, G, which is the acceleration of gravity, is going to be the same because they're all on the same planet. And they're all submerged, so they all have the same volume that's underneath the water. Therefore, force buoyancy has to be the same. So if you go back and look at the problem, they give you a bunch of numbers. But if you read this very first part where it said three objects of the same volume, that's your key phrase. So just something to look for as you're reading through the question. All right. Same thing here, pause the video, take a look at it, and then come back and we'll discuss it. Okay, so the answer for this is two Newtons, and here's the reason why. When the object is submerged, there's an additional upward force. That's the force buoyancy pushing it up. If it originally had a net force of five that was going down, and then in the water, it's only three, if you subtract those two values, that's going to give you the force buoyancy that's pushing up on it. It's going to give you the difference. And here's a way to think about it. If I weigh five Newtons and then I go someplace else and I weigh three Newtons, there has to be something pushing me up so that I weigh less. It would be just like you stepping on a scale and somebody pushes up on the scale. You're going. It's going to show that you weigh less. All right. One Kind of follow-up question, same thing, just kind of pause it. This is where I'm gonna ask you to actually come up with a number for what is force buoyancy. So we're just doing some practice problems right now. So hit pause, try to work this one out, and we'll come back and look at it. Okay, so on this one, I wrote down the equation. So force buoyancy is density of fluid times gravity times the volume displaced. Plugged in the numbers that I know, just multiplied them and I got 19,600 Newtons and Newtons are just, anytime I have force, my unit for that is always Newtons. So use my force buoyancy equation, plug in my numbers and solve. Okay, 
one more practice problem. So read through it, pause it, same idea, and then we'll discuss it here in a second. Okay, so on this one, my overall net force has to be zero. So I've got force tension, force buoyancy minus force of gravity. So what I did to start, force buoyancy, which is my only upward force, minus force gravity, which is pulling me down, minus force tension, which is also pulling this object down, has to equal zero. And then it asked me to solve for force tension. So I rearranged the equation to solve for force tension and then solve for it. So force tension minus the force buoyancy minus gravity, plugged in my numbers and solved and got 19.2. Um, you could either solve this by just leaving your numbers exactly like this. What I did was just, because they have two things in common, I just factored those out and then solved it. If you like doing this initial setup and just plugging your numbers in, feel free to do that. If you like pulling out and factoring out, you can also do that. So a couple of different ways you could solve that, but it should give you the same answer. All right, so buoyancy and Archimedes principle, last kind of concept for today. Um, for an object that's floating, so a way to think about an object that's floating, the force buoyancy, which is the force pushing it up, has to equal force gravity acting on the object. So that's the key thing there. So force buoyancy and force gravity have to be equal to each other. Uh, so there's gonna be, and you'll have the, so when it's floating, force buoyancy and force gravity are just equal. All right, final two practice problems. So pause the video again and take a few minutes, work through those, and we will go over those here in just a second. All right, now that you have unpaused the video, um, the weight of the water displaced is always equal to the object uh, that is floating. So the weight of the water is equal to the object. The object was 1500 newtons. So the weight of the water is also gonna be 1500 newtons. Uh, the next question, we could say force gravity is equal to force the force buoyancy. And then I just broke that equation down into mass times gravity equals density of the fluid times gravity times volume, plugged in all of my numbers, and then did algebra to solve and got about 0 0.048 for volume. Let's see. All right, that is the last slide. Um, just as a reminder, I'm gonna hit stop sharing on my screen first. Hey, just a last, last reminder, um, office hours on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Feel free to come by for those. If you have any questions, the link for that is in Canvas. And I love to see you guys there. You guys have a great rest of the day.